If you could only choose one, those are the rules of the iron face-off. Today we're pitting three shoulder exercises against each other. We have the seated dumbbell press, the standing dumbbell press, and the standing barbell press. Which is the best for you? Today we're going to determine that in another iron face-off. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier at AthleanX.com. It's another iron face-off. We're talking about the shoulders. You don't want to wind up in this guy's position because this guy ain't lifting any weights anymore and we're going to pit three shoulder exercises against each other because it matters. They all might seem like presses, the seated dumbbell press, the standing dumbbell press, and the uh, standing barbell press, but doing the wrong ones can actually wind up costing you your shoulders in the long run. And I'm big on keeping your shoulders healthy because you kind of need them. The first thing we aren't going to cover that's not in here is the bar behind the neck press. And that's because we talked about in other videos before that the scapular plane here, the angle of the joint that the shoulder, the upper arm bone here, rests in, the glenoid, is actually angled forward at about 45 degrees here. So you don't want to press with your arm way out to the side so that you can get your arm behind your head. That's actually fighting your anatomy. So we can wipe that one right out of consideration. But we do start over here with the seated dumbbell press. And what we want to know is, is this a good option? All of these are probably options that you've used. I've used all of these options, but I got to be very specific here. I have to get down to the one recommendation, the one winner. And I can do that for you. And we start kind of here in reverse order. We're going to eliminate this one. But we eliminate it for a couple key reasons. When we do the press, a lot of people will say that they like it because they're more specifically targeting their shoulders because they've taken their legs out of the equation. Right, they're pushing mostly right here from the shoulders and directing the work there. I'm going to argue that that's actually not happening. Because what you're going to do as you start to fatigue especially is dig in with your feet. You're going to start pushing because we need to have that counter force. If we got to drive up, then we have to push down. That's just how the muscles work. Our body wants to push away as we drive up. So as we fatigue, we start to do that. The next thing we do is we try to start to recruit some help. And the natural way that our body is going to recruit help is to lean back just a little bit, meaning we're going to arch a little bit, lean back to create this slight angle, this slight incline to do what? Recruit the upper chest. So now we have not just the delts that are working, but the upper chest is now helping, as you can see that, to do this press. But when I do this and I dig my head back into the bench, I wind up with two things. Number one, neck problems. You probably felt it before if you've ever pushed too hard on a press. And more importantly, I'm digging my upper back and scapula into the bench, which interrupts the normal upward rotation that's necessary to press upward in this normal pattern here. We call it the scapula humeral rhythm, meaning you need to have your scapula and your humerus move in sync with each other in a combination of a two-thirds, one-third contribution to get smoothly up overhead. But if I'm pushing into the bench and interrupting the smoothness of the rotation of the scapula up while I ra raise my arm up, then I've screwed up the whole, uh, the whole press here and that's not what we want. So we've got to X that one out. But now we can come up to standing dumbbell press and a standing barbell press. Now, when we do the standing dumbbell press, a couple of things that we've just done is we're ground-based, we feet are on the ground, which is athletic, which is what I like. And the second thing we've done is we've demanded a stronger core. Okay, I have to be strong here to be able to stabilize and press up. And we also know that it's sometimes easier, always easier, to press one arm up at a time versus two for that very reason. My core has to be able to say, okay, you're stable, now press the combined weight here, or you're stable, now press half of that weight. It's always going to be easier to do half. But when we press them together, because we have to compare it to a barbell press, we have to have that strong core. But when we do, we can do some more things here. The dumbbells can actually move up in an arc. So we can hit the shoulders in more of an arc and get more of a contraction up here at the top. You can feel it instantly than I could if I had a barbell, since the barbell can't bend. Okay, we have that. We also have the opportunity, if needed, to get a little assistance from our legs as we fatigue to turn this more into a little bit of an assisted push press towards the end so that when we reach failure here, we can keep it going just a few extra reps with that extra push. Okay, so we've got that for consideration. When we come over here to the barbell press, if you're going to do the barbell press how some people do the barbell press, then it instantly becomes the second loser in line here behind the seated dumbbell press. 
And that is when people go wide and they go out here, okay? Even if they're going with their ring fingers on the smooth portion of the bar, and they come up, look at what that does in terms of the position of your elbows. The position of your elbows is it's starting to push them back to the side, again, like this. Even if you're leaning back, you have that path upward, but the elbows are starting to creep towards that behind the neck position. The ideal position, as the dumbbells allow you to, is to have your elbows in front of your body, more in line with that scapular plane that Raymond demonstrated at the beginning of this video. But we can change that. We can do the barbell press with a narrower grip. So right here on the edge of the knurling, right where it starts, put your fingers there. That's gonna put you at about shoulder width apart from here. Now, look at the angle of your elbows in front of your body, okay? Much safer, arms in the scapular plane. When we go to push, from here, you get that extra lat activation down and back behind you that helps you to stabilize beyond just your core. So there's an advantage there. I press up and come down again, follow that same path, up and down, up and down. Now, they're kind of similar when done that way in regards to the position of the elbow, but we have to choose a winner. If I had to pick one, because of the extra versatility of the path of those dumbbells, because I can arc them, because they can be independent of each other, because I can't hide an imbalance right side versus left side that I can with a barbell, then I'm gonna have to, if I had to, I'm gonna have to pick the standing dumbbell press. Guys, the iron face off, we try to cover all the reasons why, because of the pros and the cons, but to try to help you to come up with the best exercise because I know you're gonna be tempted to use all of these in different variations, and we use them all, but we program them specifically for specific reasons. If you're looking for a program, guys, that lays it all out step by step, head to athenx.com right now and get our Athenx training program. In the meantime, if you like the iron face-offs, if you want to see more exercises to compete head to head, let me know what you want me to cover, and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys, see you soon.